Hi, my name is Isa, and today we'll talk about the basics. We will cover resistor circuits, Kirchhoff's laws, and red tires oscilloscope function. All that in about 10 minutes. Voltage, current, and resistance. I could write down the formulas that describe their relations or enclose them in a triangle. This triangle is a tool for, for correct equations, which students seem to like quite a lot. To calculate a quantity, cover it and bam, the remaining two quantities take a position of appropriate mathematical operation. Following this, we get current is voltage over resistance. Resistance is voltage over current and voltage is resistance times current. If you hail from the land of the free, you might be used to voltage's symbol being V instead of U. All I'm going to say is whatever floats your boat. Use whichever you're used to. And in much the same way, our opinion on what the symbol of resistance looks like might differ. Americans like, like the zigzags, while Europeans prefer a box. I'm a European, which means I'll be using the boxy symbol. Back to equations now. Power that is being dissipated on a component equals current flowing through it and voltage drop across it. Note that we can substitute voltage for a function of current and resistance or current for a function of voltage and resistance. Plugging that back into the power equations, we get power equals current squared times resistance equals voltage squared over resistance. Before we conclude this video, a practice example would be in order. Calculate the current and power dissipation for this. Okay, wait, I'm sorry, this was insulting to your intelligence. You're smarter than this. Let's try something a bit more difficult. It's normal that you can solve this circuit, as I haven't told you about the Kirchhoff's laws. He left us with a pair of them. His first law, also known as Kirchhoff's current law, states that the algebraic sum of currents in a network of conductors meeting at a point is zero. To put it simply, any current entering a node must also leave it. In practice, it means that this current plus this current equals this current. Kirchhoff's second law talks about voltage. It states that the directed sum of the potential differences, voltages, around any closed loop is zero. To illustrate that, it's best to draw voltage drops across resistors and follow a loop. This voltage plus this voltage minus this voltage equals zero, minus because we enter from the minus side. Armed with this knowledge, we can tackle the circuit I showed you before. Be warned, this section will contain a bit of math but just the setup and the solution. Kirchhoff's first law tells us that current 1 plus current 2 equals current 3. And on the second note, current 3 equals current 4 plus current 2. Kirchhoff's second law gives us the following two equations. Voltage 2 plus voltage 3 equals voltage y. and voltage 1 plus voltage 3 plus voltage 4 equals voltage x. The currents are 0 0.5 milliamps, 3.5 milliamps, 4 milliamps, and 0 0.5 milliamps. The voltages are 
0.5 volts, 7 volts, 2 volts and 0.5 volts. Think it would be appropriate to wire up this circuit and make some more measurements. I've prepared the board in advance. It's time to connect the red pitaya. Take the Ethernet port and plug it in the Ethernet jack. Take note of the address on the housing because we will need that later. After that, power up the USB port. If your red pitaya has multiple ports, connect the cable to the power port. After powering it up, type the address that is written on Ethernet jack housing in the web browser. If it doesn't load up right away, try to disconnect Wi-Fi on your computer. Once in main menu, click the oscilloscope app. Now we will configure it. Set the probes 1 and 2 so that they have 1 to 10 attenuation ratio, both in software and in hardware. Now connect the alligator clip of one probe to any resistor on the circuit and put the other one to the other node. There is no need to connect the second alligator clip. Now it's time to connect the batteries. Let's see what happens. As I connected the first battery, you saw the levels changed. When I connect the second one, the change happens again. We can choose any other resistor, connect the probes to the nodes, and we can calculate the voltage drop across the resistor by subtracting the two signals. But why bother with this circuit? It's useless. That would be correct. This circuit is nothing more than an exercise in solving resistor circuits. Let's go through a few useful examples of resistor circuits used in real life. It has to start with the quick equations though. Voltage divider. Voltage divider is a pair of resistors wired in a series. Usually one resistor is connected to reference voltage and the other one to the ground potential. Voltage on junction point is calculated as Ux equals U0 times second resistor over the sum of both resistors. This means that we can use components whose resistance varies with various external influences to measure those influences. Take a potentiometer. Rotating the knob moves a wiper along the resistive track, forming a dynamic voltage divider. Among many other things, this is used in joysticks. Why stop there? Let's take load cells for a ride. They consist of a bendable body and strain-dependent resistors, whose resistance depends on how much they are compressed or stretched. It would be dumb to assume that there isn't a temperature-dependent resistor. In fact, all resistors are temperature-dependent, which is more often than not an unwanted effect, but when a resi resistor shows a very significant temp temperature dependence, that just calls for using it in a thermometer. In this example, I heated up the resistor. Its resistance dropped and the voltage rised. Let's see what happens if we heat it up even more. Still not satisfied by a plethora of practical uses for resistor circuits, we showed you the voltage divider, potentiometer, load cells, and temperature-dependent resistors. You can try some other examples yourself, light or humidity-dependent resistors, and other different applications that base off of Kirchhoff's laws. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. We will cover more in the following videos. Like, share, and subscribe. Bye!